اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد ہو و نسلی اللہ رسول الکریم لاسٹ ٹائم وی ہیڈ ڈسکس دی ارینجمنٹ آف دی سور الفاتح اینڈ دی ویوز آف سم آف دی ویری 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 ویل نون اسکالرس on the arrangement of uh, this surah. For example, we had uh, quoted uh, Qurtubi, Shafi, Asad, and uh, others, uh, Azad. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, uh, so far as the importance of the belief is concerned, and uh, this, uh, this surah, in very small words, in small um, in space, in small paragraph or less than a paragraph it uh, in fact uh, brings not only belief but uh, it uh, cements the belief and it uh, further encourages and all these things pertaining to belief <clears throat> they can be discovered in just one small surah the prophet peace be upon him said that if the believer knew what punishment of allah what allah has the punishment for the disbelievers and how they will be punished if the believer knew this that what is the punishment then nobody would disobey the law and if the disbeliever knew disbeliever now disbeliever knew what the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is then he will never lose hope and both these things have been combined and mentioned in this uh, surah they say these scholars say in the malik yawmiddin <laughs> of course this is a crux of the quran this is the essence of quran a small surah and then for its details we have to look into quran and this uh, uh, surah small surah invites attention to this entire concept of Yomuddin, its different aspects. And within Yomuddin, the concept of Deen, the concept of uh, Yomuddin, the Day of Judgment, the concept of responsibility. And within that, the concept of morality. And that um, man is answerable for every action. And there is one who will take the account. And he has the power to punish. And not only power to punish, but he has the power to reward also. So when the believer looks into Al-Fatiha and goes deeper into it, every word of it, every phrase of it, and its context, he has to go into Quran. He has to go into the concepts which are given in Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Fatiha is not just for reading in a hurry, just reading it away. That is why it has been prescribed to read it again and again, every time, in every raka. So that if we miss to note anything or notice anything, we may, if we, have, we are attentive, if we have the intention, we may catch the point, we catch the phrase, we catch the idea. Yomuddin, repeating every day, but how much we can, any one of us can, explain this concept, that this concept was ingrained in the evolution and the theory says that the moral evolution cannot be explained without responsibility. And the moral evolution cannot be explained without accountability. And it cannot be explained without the concept that the rules for the morality, for the responsibility, for the accountability, for the judgment and its implementation, implementation must be given by one lawgiver. And that lawgiver must have the authority to implement it. 
to implement the law and also to implement the judgment on the last day. And why the last day, Yomuddin, all these concepts, when we look at it, when we try to understand it, if we start understanding Quran from Surah al fatiha take just one phrase and try to understand it, it takes us into Quran, deeper. It takes us into sciences, physical sciences, social sciences, and all these things Usually in the West, those scholars, and scholars of uh, uh, religious scholars, for example, they have gone into these questions. That this concept of Yom Muddin in the Quran, in, the, in Islam, is very scientific. It is pointing towards so many important aspects. The, this retribution, Yomuddin, it has been explained at many other places in Quran. I'm not going into those details. It is due to Allah's intensive loving care and consideration that accountability, Yomuddin, has been mentioned after assurance of benevolence and mercy. Reward with benevolence and justice with mercy. Two things. A reward with benevolence, without limit it can be. It can be even without hisab. That you cannot take hisab of the reward which has been given. Without hisab does not necessarily mean that without accountability. Without hisab means, for example, one deserves one dollar and you give him a million dollar. It is without hisab. One has done a job for one hour. The wage was $10 and you give him $1,000. That is without hisab. This is another aspect of hisab. So, the reward, without bene uh, reward with benevolence, benevolence and it can be without hisab and justice with mercy. Here it is not without hisab. It is with hisab. But justice is with mercy. Mercy why mercy? Mercy for the victim and mercy for the person who has committed the crime. It's not here, mercy does not mean forgiving him. Here it means that adjudicating, deciding, judging the matter with due diligence, with any mitigation which he deserves, but it cannot be at the cost of the compensation to which the victim is entitled to the the he, it cannot be at the cost of the retribution or recompense to which the victim is entitled that is mercy for the victim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the laws of judgment explain the laws of judgment and we can draw a benefit for application during this life also because the Yom Deen starts from Adam alayhi salam. He will be judged on the basis of the law which, was he, which he was given during his lifetime. Those who were given Torah, they will be judged according to the law which was given to them and they died during that period. Similarly, Injil, similarly, Avesta, similarly, Avedas and others. On that day, it, on the Yom Deen, the judge is one, the lawgiver is one. At one place in Quran, we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the people of uh, the form of uh, Musa alayhi salam, they were demanding that we should be given the miracles. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, should bring the miracles, those miracles which were given to Musa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those miracles were given in a time frame. Those miracles are needed there. Now, those miracles are need, not needed. It's not on this, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, not the requirement of uh, the uh, current period of the history. You will be judged, uh, you will be judged historically. That is what, is the, what the, uh, the scholars conclude. 
that the judgment is historical on the day of judgment. It is based on that portion of the law which was given during that period of the history. So, so there are so many concepts in this Yom Uddin. And mercy, it is must Allah's mercy that He will judge according to the law which was given in that time. And also, it is understood from this that if somebody has not received that law, that law does not, did not reach him, then he may, may get some mitigation. For example, after the judgment takes place on the day of judgment, last day of the judgment, and people are taken they are to the, to the prison, they are taken to Jahannam. Even at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribes a principle and which is adopted here in the civilized world that a second verification takes place at the gate before the person is sent into the jail. There the uh, guard, guards of this Jahannam, they ask that person, did you receive the message? Did any messenger come to you? Although Allah's, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's system is perfect. And why he is telling that this question will be asked? This is for us. That when you create a legal system, and in, under that system somebody gets a judgment, and in that judgment he gets a punishment, he is now committed to the prison, or to that judgment, even at the last time before hanging, you should verify every every uh, aspect of it, every detail of it. You have seen in the civilized world, in the hospitals, the nurse brings the tablet and he asks the person, are you awake? What is your name? What is your date of birth? This is the medicine I am giving you. It is written on it. But in, in, in third world countries you have seen, without asking anything, they administer medicine of one person to the other person. And there are not one, thousands of cases in which people are committed wrongly to the prison. The judgment has been announced. The man is ignorant. He has this doesn't have any attorney. He can't understand. And when the people come out of the courtroom, the police is around them. They take them as a herd into the van. They bring them to the back to the jail and then they put them into the jail. And the person who got the bail or the person who got the acqu acquittal, he's also back to the jail. Or he's uh, committed to the jail. There are principles. The law, administration of law which has been shown during the day of the judgment by the Malik of Yomuddin, when we understand, when we try to understand, now the phrase is used, Malik Yomuddin. Now we have to go into Quran. This phrase, not Malik separately, Deen separately, Yom separately, this phrase, how he administers it. Another principle is given there, what the Malik Yomuddin will do there, what the judge should do in the court here. The evidence has been taken. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called the messengers. The, he's, they are being asked. Isa alayhi salam being, is being asked. There are some other procedures also, but I'm coming to just one point. There's a victim. She can't speak. She didn't speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it, but he wants to make it known. One of the important maxim of for justice is that justice not only should be done, justice not only should be done, but it should be done to be shown. Show It should show, the justice should, should show itself. Now the Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing the justice. He's asking the victim, girl, who was killed, why were you killed? He's giving opportunity to the victim to speak herself. Not the attorney, not the uh, messenger. 
it is the responsibility of the judge in the case of the victim to talk to her to talk to her talk to the weaker person who is there appearing there if the weaker person does not have an attorney it is the responsibility of the judge of the court to provide him attorney at the cost of his state to defend or to present or appeal her case or his case these principles can we know when we read a phrase in surah al fatiha some people say that why i am going into surah al fatiha so much if we go into the phrase which has been mentioned in surah al fatiha then we are compelled to go into that study into quran maliki wa middin what is the model of judgment which he has and of justice which he has provided there as the victim as the weak as that girl why you were killed evidence is there allah knows it allah is asking before everybody he is asking isa alai salam did you say this thing about me when you were there and he gives a statement before everybody and they are being called an organized manner so there are so many things that if any word in surah fatiha we try to understand and then word in a phrase and that phrase we try to understand and that phrase in the ayat that ayat and we try to understand through tartil of ayat in quran through the context in quran if we want to understand the system which has been mentioned in surah al fatiha the concept the philosophy everything we have to go to quran seven times we read surah fatiha but we don't go never go into quran taking that clue from surah al fatiha seven times a day uh, five times a day in every rakah we don't take a clue we never go there laws governing social sciences same laws govern the social sciences that govern the physical world same laws of equilibrium in surah rahman ash-shams wal qamar bi hasban and then there is mention of mizan in the quran there is mention of equilibrium there is mention of adl there is mention of justice all these things go together and here equilibrium where when we find that this surah is talking of equilibrium from where do we find that this surah al fatiha is talking about equilibrium it is talking of equilibrium as i said that the, the scholars who have gone deeper into surah fatiha they say that this is the surah which takes us into the evolutionary aspects of morality responsibility accountability from here the here they say that the can it accountability what is the purpose of accountability the account of the purpose of accountability is to establish balance mizan why establish mizan establish mizan to establish equilibrium in the society so that society is not disturbed it doesn't go become cruel it does doesn't become distorted in one surah all these things are provided but seven five times a day every time in a rak'a in every rak'a do we ever stop on any word and take it for consideration step by step recompense yawmuddin accountability accountability for equilibrium to establish equilibrium in the society balance in the society otherwise society will become disbalanced there will be no balance in economic welfare 1% of the population of the world is the 90% of the wealth of the world and 99% of the population of the world is craving for just 1% of the um, wealth of the planet in terms of gdp in terms of income i'm talking about the incomes this is imbalance the will people will be taken to account that you went to sleep at night with full belly 
Whereas, if I give an example of Pakistan, for example, country, more than 12 crore people, 120 million people don't have food at night. They go without food. They go hungry. Is it not equilibrium? Question of equilibrium? It is not a question that the society has become disbalanced and it has become disbalanced. Is it not a question of accountability? Allah says, I'll take account. I came to you. I talked to you. I asked you. Prophet says, it is responsibility. And when we go deeper, we find that hunger, if it creates disbalance in the society, it is a crime, general crime, collective crime of the society. The society will be punished. They will face azab collectively. What happened in the revolutions of communism? The societies at that time, when there was disbalance, they were punished severely. Look at the massacres taking place at that time. People being killed at that time. Azab in this world. Just one word. And it has now taken us to the other, to the equilibrium. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says that I am kaimum bil kist. This universe I've established with kist. I do kist myself. Justice. Equilibrium. You can translate it as equilibrium. Surah, uh, uh, ayat 4 of Surah 1 enunciates the concept of judgment and recompense which we have discussed now. The Quran clarifies that there are these are based on the principles of Kist and Adl. Now we are going a bit deeper. We are now dividing Kist and Adl. Do two concepts. Kindly correlated with social sciences. When the Queen of England gave the charter to East India Company to, to uh, establish colony in the colonize the entire Indian Empire, uh, Indian continent, subcontinent, they gave them the charter, 1772. Read that charter. She lays down certain things, and then there is and within that there's one thing that you have to administer, you have to establish equilibrium and she uses the word equity. In fact, there are three words used, uh, justice, fair play and equity. So far as the political colonization is concerned, so far as the economic colonization is concerned, they are doing it. But People, even after independence in the entire India, in the entire India, and even today, they remember the equity, fair play, and justice of the British period. The one phrase which she provided in the charter which was given to East India Company and their entire civil service, entire their judicial services. In fact, the judiciary was administered by through by the civil uh, by the civil servants. They stuck to the instruction. Here, every time Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is telling us, "Do adl, adl in your family, adl with your wife, with your husband, with your children, in your society, with a neighbor." I am I am in full belly. He is hungry. This is not adl. Kist and Adl, these are two, balance and equity. When we have now split this, that what, uh, uh, I mean, that mean accountability, what is the purpose of accountability in Surah al fatiha Balance. And when we have further gone into it, we find it's in basically two elements, Kist and Adl, and Quran is talking about that. It has taken into that I am not just discussing Surah al fatiha within any Surah or anything which I have been discussing. In that, I am discussing different subjects, different Surah, in fact, different subjects and sub-subjects. So it's not just Surah al fatiha which we are discussing. We are discussing Quran. 
we are discussing the concepts of Quran and correlating them with the social sciences and the physical sciences. Because Quran is discussing all of them together. Quran is in Quran, there's no separate chapter on physics or chemistry. They are all together. We have to discuss all together. This is the lesson of the Quran. The whole universe is governed by regular laws. It's not that the one law is there today. There's one law and tomorrow there will be different law. There are laws, regular laws. Sun rises every day on time. Moon comes every uh, period on its manazils under the regular one law, one law, regular law, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I gave once. And since the universe has been created, the number of the months, lunar months is the same. Counting is the same. For the year, it is the same. The manazil of the moon are the same. Although everything is in motion, moon is moving, sun is moving, entire solar system is moving. Sun along with his entire family of planets is moving in a direction, going somewhere. And scientists have located that. We have we didn't locate, Quran told us, but we didn't locate it. Mustakar, where is the mustakar of uh, sun? If somebody asks any Muslim, but they have mapped it on the chart, where it is going. There are regular laws that although the sun and that the moon is, moon is that object which is controlled by the gravity of the earth. That is moon of the earth. It is moon called moon because of that. But Quran tells us, Walkamar is a talaha. Before that, sun is mentioned. That have you considered when the moon leaves the orbit of the earth and it starts following the sun? Walkamar is a talaha. Talaha, the shams, sun. Now sun is moving, uh, moon is moving, earth is moving. Moon is leaving the orbit of the earth, going directly into the orbit of the sun. It starts revolving around sun, talaha, following it directly. But the calculation has not changed. The regular law, which governs the laws of the manazil of uh, the moon, it, is, it has not changed. It does not change. It takes same time, same position, same manazar. Since the universe has been created. Now, according to the, there's a board, separate board for a study of moon. Quran is asking us to study these things, but we never do that. There's a separate board of scientists focusing only and only on moon. It works in Europe and they are closely watching and now we are going through the period it may happen in our lifetime that the moon is about to leave the leave following the earth and may start following the sun and they are calculating you can find it on google how much how many degrees how much speed how much space how much uh, i mean calculations are taking place how it is taking place it's wonderful if you see those calculations and graphs and everything, how moon, moon, so some moon is tal, will be talaha, will be following the sun. Quran has invited attention, but we can't do that. Seven, five times a day, we after repeated seven ayat, and they don't take us into, if they don't lead us into the Quran, and the Quran does not lead us into the phenomena, the mazahir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the nature then it means we have closed our eyes, we have closed our ears, we have closed our brain. We don't think about it. So kindly, it, see that I'm not discussing only Surah Fatah. I'm discussing Quran and I'm not only discussing Quran, but I'm Quran discussing Quran according to the plan of Quran that all the uloom sciences have been explained together. Attention has been invited to look into those details together, together. 
there are laws for the operation of all forces which maintain motion and sustain existence in equilibrium. And equilibrium raises the question of accountability. For example, the phrase used by the Quran, Kaimum Bil Kist. Because of this, it led us to understand the Kist and the other. And this says, Allah SWT says that I am Kaimum Bil Kist. My universe is Kaim because of the Kist, because of the equilibrium which I have established. Invites attention to the subject just in two words Yomuddin, Malik Yomuddin, concept of Yomuddin. Recompense. Since we don't allow study of philosophy in the madrasa, philosophy has been banned. Therefore, we, do, we don't open up the root of every word of Quran and we don't go into its philosophy. Every root of Arabic word in the Quran and talking about the Quran is a package of information of philosophy. Not just one subject of philosophy, but a bundle of subjects of philosophy in just one root. It opens up the mind. Is philosophy. Just in two words on which volumes exist to explain a number of facts of sciences and sociology involved in it. But let us open that packet and allow philosophy. The maintenance of equilibrium means application. Now we are going into the a bit deeper into it. What does it mean? It means application and enforcement of the laws of balance with justice. Kaimum bil kis. If there is no application of the law, the law is there, but there is no application. There's application, but there's no enforcement. It cannot be enforced. These are two in, in, in important things in any legal system. So Allah's laws in the Kaimum Bil Kist, their application and enforcement of the laws, laws of balance, and balance with just Kist. And the account will be taken of this thing. It is here where the account will be taken. Kindly, there is a misconception usually that we will be, there will be salvation because of the good deeds. We emphasize good deeds. Yes, that's very good. I agree. And we take it separately. If I do the, give you the path, I go to Umrah, I do this thing, I'll be saved. I, there will be salvation. It is not just, it is not the concept of Quran that just, just, only, only the deed, good deed will save. It is also saving yourself, taqwa, saving yourself from the prohibitions, which has been prohibited. One indulges in every prohibition, which has been pro prohibited, we violate it but at the same time does the good deed. What will be the result? It's not the good deed that will bring salvation. I'm talking of salvation. Salvation will be brought by good living, living, life, balance, good living. It's a question of good living, not just good deed. That you kill a person and at the same time you give khairat. You beat the wife, beat wife, and at the same time you give khairat. This is not good living. This is, there is no balance. We have to understand these concepts. And Surah Fatah is taking us into Quran to understand these things. On any extent of examination and analysis, we shall find no imbalance whatsoever in the Quran in physical terms. Allah explains this in Surah Mulk. And then along with that ayat, you will immediately find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that if any, even any, any star, and there are stars which are crores of times bigger than the sun, our sun, crores of times, not one time, two times, three times, hundred times, a thousand times, crores of times big, bigger than the sun. Even if they leave the orbit, 
even if they deviate from the orbit, they become regime. They are followed. They are chased. They are destroyed. And immediately after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks, talks about the social science that you will be taken to account. There will be azab if you violate this. Immediately after the physical science, the social science has been explained. These are not separate. Quran has to be understood in its total totality and context. In the social perspective, also, we have to abide by the rules of proportion. Rules of proportion. Adil equity, which, for example, for example, Queen of Britain gave to the East India Company and they ruled for 200 years without any disturbance. In all these spheres of human activity, uh, this uh, from here will be the discussion on uh, Adil will start therefore. I'm leaving here. Subhan Rabbi Karabil is that Amma Yasifun of Salam and Allah Mursalin of Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alami. Allah Mursali, you sell him a very Allah say no Mohammedin or Allah Ali who was Sahbi. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا وصف عنا شر ما قضيت اللهم ادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين اللهم اخرجنا من ظلمات الجهل والوهم إلى نور العلم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم اجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول ويتبعون أحسنا اللهم أوزعنا أن نشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علينا وعلى والدينا وأن نعمل صالحا ترضاه اللهم أصلح لنا في زريتنا إن تبنا إليك وإننا من المسلمين اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وفضلك عن من سواك اللهم فضلك ورحمتك على كلمة الحق والدين اللهم منصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين يا أكرم الأكرمين Oh Allah, spread your mercy upon us shower us with your blessings increase our knowledge grant us forgiveness and reward us with the company of the prophets in the Firdaus Al-A'la Oh Allah <clears throat> Forgive our parents and all our friends and relatives who have passed away. Oh Allah, make their graves garden from heaven and grant them the Firdaus Al-A'la. Oh Allah, we have many of our friends and relatives who are sick. Oh Allah, we have our son Ma'raj, our daughter Aishawani, our grandson Isa. Oh Allah, grant all of them full and speedy recovery. Oh Allah, we know that there is no cure but yours. Oh Allah, grant them a cure that leaves no ailment or injury. Oh Allah, we seek from you all of the good who whether we know it or we don't. And we seek your refuge from all evil who whether we know it or we don't. <clears throat> oh Allah, we have many of our brethren, particularly those in Palestine, who are facing aggressive enemies, unjust worldly, and complacent Muslim nation. Oh Allah, grant them victory, heal their trauma, protect their helpless, and grant them peace and prosperity. Oh Allah, we ask with every name you have elected for yourself that none of us leave this gathering, but his pains have been relieved, his worries have been removed, his debts have been paid, his weaknesses have been concealed, his sins have been forgiven, and his needs have been fulfilled. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adada khalqih wa rida nafsih wa zinat arshih wa midada kalimatih. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adada khalqih wa rida nafsih wa zinat arshih wa midada kalimatih. سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزينة عرشه ومداد كلماته والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحة وتواصب بالحق وتواصب بالصبر وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته